Welcome to Goofing Off Road. My name's Tony. The JK Jeeps came with a four pin trailer wiring harness for towing utility trailers. I'm gonna be getting an off-road trailer and that requires a seven pin trailer connector so that it can control the e-brake and also so that it can charge the batteries. So today I'm gonna to be installing this four pin to seven pin trailer wiring harness. And I'm also gonna install this Prodigy brake controller to control the brakes. Let me show you how to do it. To make this easier, I bought a kit from eTrailer that comes with the 4-pin to 7-pin adapter, a bracket, the circuit breakers, wiring, RIN terminals, buck connectors, and even zip ties. This Jeep used to have a 4-pin connector on it just here in the factory location. And as you can see, it's not there anymore because I smashed it off on a rock. So when I install the new one, I'm going to install it above the bumper. To install the bracket, you're going to need glue tape and a marker, a ratchet and sockets, a Phillips screwdriver and a 3 8 inch wrench, and a drill and drill bits. We'll also use these when we're installing the wiring. I think this is a good location for the bracket, so I'm going to mark the holes where the bracket are going to go. I'm going to center punch the holes and then drill holes in the bumper. I taped the washer and the nut to the wrench so I didn't lose them. And then I secured the bracket to the bumper with nuts and bolts. The harness comes with a four pin trailer side connector to plug directly into the four pin connector on the Jeep. I lost my four pin connector on the Jeep to a rock a long time ago. So I'm gonna cut this connector off and put four buck connectors on there that I can use to connect to the wiring that's left over on the Jeep. Now it's time to attach the trailer socket to the bracket with the provided nuts and bolts. I need to open the rear door of the Jeep so that I can get the nuts done up. This is a good test to make sure the rear door clears the bracket. Here goes. Okay, that looks good. Now I can get to tighten them up. Before I tuck the wires in, let me show you what we have. These four wires here, the green, the white, the brown and the yellow, connect to your existing trailer wires. This white wire is a ground and we're going to connect that to the chassis. This blue wire is to go to the trailer brake controller and we're going to run that to the front of the Jeep. The black wire is 12 volt, this goes to the battery, we're going to run that to the front of the Jeep. And this yellow one is for the reverse lights and we're going to connect that into our existing reverse light wiring. Here's the wiring for the seven pin plug if you're looking into it from the front. To install the wiring, you're gonna need wire cutters, crimpers, and pliers, eight and 10 millimeter and three eighth inch wrenches, some electrical tape and scissors, a ratchet and a 10 mil socket, an old coat hanger or something to push the wires through. You can use the excess wire, but I chose to use my own wire and a heat gun. First of all, I'm gonna put the four pin connector into the bracket. And then we're gonna tuck the rest of the wires down behind the bumper. These are stock Jeep wires. Left is white and yellow, right is white and green, the parking lights are white and orange, and the ground is black. And we're gonna attach those to the, the wires up here. We're going to connect the black wire to the white harness wire. The orange and white wire to the brown harness wire. The green wire to the green and white wire. And the yellow wire to the yellow and white wire. It turns out the turn signal wiring on my Jeep trailer harness was backwards. So I ended up wiring the yellow and white wire to the right light and the green and white wire to the left light. You might want to check yours when you install it. The next thing to do is to secure the ground wire to the chassis. I'm going to do it at the rear of the bumper so that it doesn't get crushed if the bumper comes down on something. 
Now we're going to connect the black wire from the harness to the provided black wire and the blue wire on the harness to the provided white wire. Now we need to connect the yellow wire from the plug to the positive wire on the reverse light. The first thing we need to do is to take the brake light cluster out by removing these two screws. And then just slide the brake light cluster out. With the light out of the way, I can push a wire up from underneath and grab it inside of the light housing. Now we can use this provided vampire tap to connect the wire to the green and white wire for the reverse light. With the green and white wire attached, we can now put the light housing back and attach the wire to the yellow wire for the reverse light at the other end. With all the wires connected, I dressed the wires, wrapped them in electrical tape, and then zip tied them to the bumper so they don't go anywhere. I ran the supply gray wire along the driver's side frame to the engine compartment at the front of the Jeep. Because I didn't want the circuit breakers to be exposed, I bought these circuit breakers with covers, and then I made this bracket to mount them on and then I mounted them on the passenger side fender close to the battery. There are two wires inside here. The black wire goes to the power for the trailer, so that needs to go to the circuit breaker on the passenger side. The white wire goes to the trailer brake controller output, so that needs to go through the firewall to the inside of the Jeep. I'm going to pass this wire across to the passenger side and make sure it's long enough to get to the circuit breaker. Okay, so this is long enough to get to the circuit breaker, so I know I can cut the wire here. I'm going to leave it just a little bit longer just in case. Then I'm going to strip the sheath to separate the wires. Next, I'm going to run a pair of wires from the battery to the driver's side of the Jeep for the power for the trailer brake controller. There's a grommet in the firewall just here. I pushed a coat hanger through it and then taped the wires to the coat hanger and pulled them through. Now it's time to wire up the brake controller. We've got four wires to connect. The blue wire connects to our white wire that runs back to the trailer plug. The white wire connects to ground on the battery. The black wire goes to the circuit breaker and then to the battery. And the red wire connects to the cold side of the brake switch for the brake pedal. I want to install the brake controller somewhere here underneath the steering wheel. I'm gonna put on some blue tape Mark where the top of the bracket is, and then take the panel out and mount the brake controller to the panel. The panel simply comes out by pulling it and hinging it downwards. While the panel is out, we're going to remove this cover so that we can get to the brake switch more easily. Take out the two screws and then lift it up and pull it out. With the panel out of the way, we can get to the brake switch. To make it easier to work, we're going to dismount it, reach in, turn it counterclockwise, and pull it out. The kit comes with this testing light that will light up when it gets voltage. We're going to use this to figure out which is the brake switch. So first of all, we need to ground it. This plunger is normally in. What we expect to see is if we push the switch in, the light will go out, and if we release the switch, the light will go on. So the light is on at the moment. If I push the plunger in, it goes out. If I release it, it comes back on. So we know that this wire, which is the white and brown wire, is the one we need to connect to. I'm going to use the provided vampire tap to connect that wire to an additional wire we can run to the brake controller. Now we have this red wire, and if we test it with our test light, it should come on. And if we push the plunger in, the light should go out. Now you can twist the brake switch back into place.
The bracket needs to be level, so I lined it up and then secured it with the provided self-tapping screws. Now I can loosely mount the trailer brake controller. I'll tighten it up when I put it back in the Jeep. I decided to use the existing vent hole to push the wires through, so I clipped off a couple of louvers to make room for the wires. I tucked the trailer brake controller harness behind the dash, and then I connected it to the wires that were pulled. I tucked the wires away, put the panels back, and then zip tied the wires behind to secure them. Now we can start connecting the wires to the circuit breakers. The circuit breakers have a silver post for the auxiliary, which is where the power is going to, and a red post for the battery, which is where the power is coming from. The first wire we're gonna connect is this black wire, which goes to the auxiliary power on the seven pin plug at the back. This one's gonna connect to the 40 amp breaker. Next, we're going to separate the battery wires for the trailer brake controller. The black one is negative and the red one is positive. Now we can attach it to this negative post on the battery. Now we can attach the positive wire to the 20 amp circuit breaker. Now I need to connect these two positive posts to the terminal on the battery here. To keep things tidy, I made up this lead to connect both of the circuit breakers to one lug on the battery. Now I can put the covers over the circuit breakers. And then I secured the wires along the firewall with zip ties. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. If I plug in the trailer, I should see it connected on the inside. With the trailer connected, you can set the power of the brakes using the button on the right hand side. For my trailer, it's gonna be B1. You can manually operate the trailer brakes using this lever. In true spinal tap form, they go up to 11. If you unplug the trailer, or the trailer wiring is bad, then you'll see NC for not connected. The trailer brake controller is always wired to the battery, which means you don't have to worry about turning it on or off. But that also means when you turn the Jeep off, you'll see two blue lights, which means the trailer brake controller is still on. Don't worry, it will auto power off after 15 minutes. That's it, the trailer brake controller is installed and working. There are lots of steps, so just take your time and it should go smoothly. I hope this video was useful. Please like and subscribe for more cool videos. Wait, wait, one more thing before you go. Get it? One more thing before you go. You might have noticed this awesome t-shirt while I'm doing this video. This is my buddy Tomas's restaurant, Pross Beer Garden in Reno. If you want some authentic German food and tasty beverages, then pop on by. It's pretty awesome.